Welcome to Decoded by Christina. Minutes. Today, I'm going to talk about CSS Grid. Before learning how to use the various CSS Grid styles, it's helpful to begin by learning the terminology of the parts that make up the grid. To initiate a grid layout, start with the Display property using one of two options, Grid or Inline Grid. Apply the style to the grid container, which is the parent element. Only the direct child elements will then be designated as the grid items and will be affected by the grid layout properties. The grid value will display the grid items to equal the width of its container. So you may not actually see any changes until other grid properties are added to define the size of the columns or rows. The inline grid value will display the grid items with the same width of its content, but only if no width is defined in the grid container or the grid columns. Grid lines are the vertical and horizontal lines that divide the grid into columns and rows and are used to determine the position of the grid items. They can be referenced by a numerical index starting at 1. A negative numerical index can also be used to reference the grid from the opposite end. You can also name the grid lines and reference it by the custom name rather than a number. The space between two adjacent grid lines is the grid track, which is basically the columns and rows. Grid tracks can also be separated by a gutter to add a space between the grid cells, which refers to a single unit defined by where the grid row and column intersect. One or more grid cells can be grouped into a grid area that can expand across multiple tracks. It must be rectangular in shape because they are bound by four grid lines. And here's how all these grid concepts fit together. In the next video, I'll discuss how to form the grid by defining the number of rows and columns.